common thing to want to do when you're analyzing data is to determine whether or not your data are consistent with some hypothesis. For example, it's typically said that average body temperatures of human beings is 98.6 degrees. Well, if you've looked at my previous videos, you know I have a sample of body temperatures for 130 uh, uh, subjects. And it's very interesting to test that data to see whether or not this group of individuals are consistent with the idea that they came from a population with a mean body temperature of 98.6 degrees. Now in statistics we call that hypothesis testing. What I'm going to do therefore is set up two hypotheses, two competing hypotheses. A null hypothesis which will get the benefit of the doubt, in this case that mean body temperature is 98.6 degrees, and an alternative that in fact it's not 98.6 degrees. And we're going to take our data and from that data basically choose between those two hypotheses. Now how are we going to do it? Well, we're going to do it by setting up a statistical test. And that statistical test is going to have a alpha risk of 5%, 0.05. Now alpha is going to be the probability that whenever I do this sort of a test, I will incorrectly reject the null hypothesis. It'll basically be the, the chance that I'll get a set of data and for whatever reason decide the null hypothesis is not true when in fact it is. In stat graphics, hypothesis testing is basically a three-step process. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our data and calculate some sort of a test statistic. The type of test statistic will depend upon what we want to test. Are we testing a mean? Are we testing the standard deviation? Are we testing a proportion? What are we testing? It'll also depend upon whether or not we're comfortable assuming the data come from a normal distribution. Some tests require that assumption, other tests do not. Now, once we get the test statistic, we'll then calculate something called a p-value. The p-value will be the probability that if the null hypothesis is true, I would get a test statistic like I have from this particular data, or maybe even a more extreme test statistic. I'll then compare p against my alpha risk. If the probability of getting this test statistic is less than the alpha risk I've decided on, then I'll reject the null hypothesis. Otherwise, I will not reject the null. Notice now, I will never accept the null. I can never prove the null is true. You're basically innocent until proven guilty. So I'm either going to find the null hypothesis to be not true and reject it, or have to go along with the idea that the null may be true because I don't have sufficient evidence to reject it. To go ahead and test the hypothesis concerning body temperatures, I have loaded up the body temp data file into the stat graphics data sheet. If you have seen my previous videos, you'll know that this column called temperature has 130 measurements from different individuals. To run a hypothesis test, I'll select Describe from the top menu, and then Numeric Data, One Variable Analysis. The data I wish to analyze is in the column called Temperature, so I'll put that in the data field. When the Tables and Graphs dialog box comes up, it'll already have checked Analysis Summary and Summary Statistics, but there's an additional table I want now down at the bottom called Hypothesis Tests. Go ahead and check that, and it'll add a third pane to the analysis window. I'll come down to the bottom left here for you and double click to maximize it. And now you can see it's actually already run some tests. It's run a T test, and a sign test, and a sign rank test. Unfortunately, it's run it for a mean of zero, which is not what I wanted to test. In that case, I'll have to push the right mouse button, go to pane options. And here you can see that I can now tune these tests to do exactly what I want. The hypothesis tests uh, pane will actually run four different tests. It'll run a t-test, a sign test, a sign rank test, 
all having to do with a null hypothesis concerning either the mean or the median of the population. And also a chi-square test in which I can test a hypothesis about the standard deviation. In this case, I think I'll run a t-test, which assumes that the data come from a normal distribution, and a sign rank test, which doesn't make that assumption. Sign rank tests can be important, for example, if I think I have outliers, which will ha could have a big impact uh, on a standard test that assumes normality. Now, over here, there's an edit field where I specify the value of the null hypothesis. In this case, I'm going to test the hypothesis that the mean, or median, if I'm running the sign rank test, is 98.6 degrees. I'm going to run the test with an alpha risk of 5% which means there'll be a 5% chance that even if the population does have a mean of 98.6, that when I'm done the test, I'll reject that hypothesis. I can also specify the type of null hypothesis. In this case, uh, type of alternative hypothesis. In this case, the alternative is not equal. In other words, I'll reject the null if the mean is either greater than or less than 98.6 degrees. You could run a one-sided test if you wanted by selecting either less than or greater than, um, but I have no particular uh, alternative that I want to test, so I'll run a two-sided test. When I press OK, the results for the hypothesis test will update, and now you can see the result of the t-test. Hypothesis, null hypothesis, mean equals 98.6. Alternative, not equal. Computed t-statistic, that's the t-statistic, the test statistic for this test, minus 5.45, p-value 4.37e to the minus 7. That means 4.37 times 10 to the minus 7th, or 0 0.0000004. Since that is less than 0 0.05, I'll reject the hypothesis and conclude that, in fact, the population from which so my subjects came do not have a mean of 98.6. The sign rank test is similar, um, except it doesn't make any assumption that the data come from a normal distribution. Technically, we're testing a hypothesis about the median, but in fact, if the data are a bell shape, the mean, the median, they're going to be uh, actually identical. Uh, this gives me a, a, a test statistic of 4.86, a p-value of 0 0.00000, which is also well below 0 0.05. It's therefore quite clear to me that my data do not come from a population with a mean of 98.6.